Hey everybody, it's Jeremy here, and I wanted to do a quick uh, little video for you. We just wrapped up our Sunday Night Profit Picks class, which is where we get together every Sunday night and look at trades and setups and everything for the week. And there was a topic that came up, which was the Gamma Squeeze. Of course, you know, just in case you have been living under a rock somewhere, there's been this really uh, bizarre situation with GameStop and uh, the price running up really big because of a bunch of people on a forum called uh, Wall Street Bets that have decided to buy the stock. Well, there's an extra phenomenon that's occurring in that. We've talked a good bit about the short sales that we're getting uh, pushed out. We call it a short squeeze. And we've talked a good bit about that, but there's something else happening called a gamma squeeze. And this is a little bit more obscure, a little less easy to understand. So I'm going to do my best to explain it in a way that you can understand it and everybody else can understand it. And if we get to the end of this thing and it doesn't turn out as good as I'm hoping it will, then uh, we'll just hit delete and we'll start over. But um, what I want to do is let's come over here to some charts and uh, let's just pick a trade like Apple. doesn't really matter what the stock is that we're looking at. And what we're talking about here when we talk about the gamma squeeze, specifically this is a options issue. And so what happens is... Yes, you do have short traders that go out and they short the stock because they think the stock's going to go down. But you can also have somebody who shorts an option contract. And that doesn't necessarily mean they think the stock's going down. It could be they think the stock's going up. They might be shorting a put or they might short a call option because they think the stock's going down. Or maybe they think the stock's just going to stay the same price and so they'll short the, the call option. Regardless, if we're dealing with the world of, of options and specifically calls, when we sell a call that we don't own the underlying stock for, we call that a naked call and we're, we're shorting that position. Uh, in the case of a call, we are expecting the stock to go down if we're shorting that call option. Well, there's a big risk to that because if you're selling somebody a call option, you're selling them the right to buy the stock at that particular price, whatever that price is. And that means that you're obligated to sell it to them. So if the stock runs up, as is the case with GameStop this week, um, then you're going to you know, be in a situation where you're having to pay out a lot of money. So uh, let's just take a worst case scenario. Let's actually take GameStop because this is one that has happened this week. And uh, let me actually come over to my other charts for this. Um, put it on the screen so you can see it there. So let's go over to GameStop. This is ticker symbol GME. And let's hypothetically say that you were shorting options. And let's say that you were shorting options back here before we had the big breakout. And you're looking at this trade and you're thinking to yourself, my goodness, GameStop, what are you doing at 20 bucks a share? There's no reason you belong at 20. I think you're going to go down. So maybe you come up here and you start shorting some $25 calls. Okay. Now, whenever you sell that call, what you're doing is you're selling somebody else the right to buy this stock at $25. You're now obligated to sell it at $25. Well, what happens if the stock goes down? If the stock goes down, it's no big deal. If the stock goes down, then you know, you're not going to be forced to, to sell it at $25 because it's, it's cheaper. Um, so, what happens if stock goes up though? Stock goes up, now somebody's gonna come buy it at 25 and you're obligated to sell it to them at 25. But if you don't have the stock, it's a problem. And so what a lot of uh, funds do, and specifically, I'm not even specifically talking hedge funds as much as maybe market makers, where they have to get in there and make the market because that's kind of their job. Their job is to make the market. If you're putting a bid and an ask out there for the option contract, somebody's gotta be on the other side of it. And the counterparty, very often, most of the time, is the market maker who is then out there further moving the option. And so what happens in a situation like this where the market maker, they've, they've issued the options, they have to sell the $25 call because they're, they're putting a bid and an ask out there for it. So since they're putting the quote out there for it, they, they have to fulfill on that. And so whenever they do that, they are now in that short position. If you're buying calls at 25 then somebody had to sell it to you, that's gonna be the market maker. So what market makers do a lot of times is they will take on a hedge position. Now you could do that by buying other calls, but they don't wanna open up that much open interest in the calls. So a lot of times what they do is they'll buy the stock. Now what this does is if the stock does go up, if they do have to, to sell their shares at that particular price, well, it's okay because they're covered 
because they have the stock already. They already own it. Now, if the stock runs up, as in the case of GameStop, let's just come over here and um, let's just walk through this really fast here. Let's say that the stock, uh, you know, it's at $25 and then suddenly it's just, oh, wow, $30. And then <laughs> it's erased the drawing on the screen. And then, you know, a couple days later, it's, oh my goodness, you know, where are we going with this thing? It's all the way up and off the chart. So, oops, I even skipped the... Uh, I even skipped the chart over. I don't know how I bumped that, but must have done it with my fat pen here. Anyway, so before you know it, you know, you're, you're, um, I'm going to have to resize this. Sorry. It's, there's so much volatility in this that I can't keep it sized in a way that we can see it. Anyway, you can see this here, what ended up happening. You know, we were down here at $25, which looks like pennies now. And, uh, you know, here we are a week later. We've traded as high as 480. So, if you had the obligation to sell at 25 and now the stock's at 480, that is a moment where now the market maker is pooping their pants. It's not just the hedge fund who shorted and had their short squeeze, but the market maker who was short those calls, they're obligated to deliver as well. So what a market maker will do oftentimes is they'll actually buy the stock. And they'll buy not as many shares as it would take to fully cover. See, an option contract is for 100 shares, but they may not take that full position because the calls are not going to go up proportionally to what the stock does. And this is where we get into the Greeks or the numbers that, that we understand to, of how the option values actually move. So let's come over here and let's look at the option chain. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Let's uh, let's go to a, a stock that's more stable because uh, GameStop is not stable right now. So let's come over here to something like Apple. And if I can, let's see if I can zoom in on this for us here. Um, that's not working. There we go. All right. Let's uh, let's say that we're looking at out of the money call options. And let me try to get this to where it's going to make sense for us. That's pretty close right there. Okay, so let's zoom in on this right here. And let's say that we're looking at out-of-the-money call options at, say, $140 a share. Okay, so you can see that. So the price on this call, if the market maker is making this market, is going to be about $2.60. That's what they can sell it for. Actually, the market maker is going to sell it for $2.68, but... That's regardless of the point here. The point is that they're going to sell it for, you know, somewhere in there, 260, 268, roughly, in that price range. Now, if you come over and you look at this column that you may not be able to see it across the top, but this is the delta column. Okay, and I'm going to circle it right here. Uh, that's off the screen, so let me zoom out and zoom in here. There you go. You see that delta? This delta is 30 cents. So here's what that means. As the stock goes up by $1, this call option is going to go up by 30 cents. Simple enough. So the stock goes up a dollar, call option is going to go up 30 cents. So what that means is if the market maker is losing a dollar on the trade, they don't have to have they don't have to have a full 100 shares to offset that or whatever they're losing. You know, if the, the stock goes up however much, they don't have to have a full 100 shares to offset it because it's at a one to three ratio, basically. So they only need about 30 shares in order to offset the risk that they've taken on with the call option. And as the stock goes up, those 30 shares will go up about a dollar. And with 30 shares going up a dollar, that's gonna offset the 100 shares that are losing 30 cents or that they're going in the hole 30 cents. Make sense? So that would be the, the spread that they would typically take or the ratio that they would take on that. Well, here's where the gamma becomes an issue. If, you're, if your stock is working within normal volatility, it's not such a big deal. But let's come back over here and let me show you one more column to the left. I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit right here. There it is. And let me circle our numbers again. So we're going to sell this for about 260 uh, is a 140 strike price. The delta, which I'm going to indicate with a little D since we don't have the top of the column on the screen here, 
And then the one right next to it is the gamma. What is gamma? Well, if you look, go ahead and go on down the strike prices a little bit here. And you'll see if we go to the higher strikes, which looks like it's going down, you see how these deltas actually get lower? That's because the further out of the money we are on an option, the lower the delta is. So the further out of the money, the lower the delta. Now, if you go the opposite direction, it does this, the, the opposite. If you go closer to at the money, the delta actually gets higher until you're at the money. And the at the money delta is usually going to be right at 50 cents. So a 50 cent delta basically means that if the dollar goes up or the underlying stock goes up a dollar, the option is going to go up 50 cents. It's a 50 cent delta. Okay. But there's something else that's happening right here that you can see. As you get further into or at the money, closer to at the money, and then ultimately into the money, the delta goes higher. And there's a curve. And if you look at this, you can see going all the way up, all the way up the screen here, all these deltas are just getting higher and higher and higher. And that is what we call the delta curve. And the delta curve happens at the rate of gamma. So gamma is a Greek in the option world. It's, it's a Greek that says, I describe it this way. I say it's the delta of the delta. It's the rate at which the delta will increase. So some, technically the term for this is a gamma squeeze, but you could also say it's a delta squeeze because what it really is, is as this stock is going further and further up and the option is ultimately getting in at, to, at and then into the money, the delta is going higher, which means the rate at which those hedges were placed is no longer working. You see, whenever we were several dollars out of the money and we had a 30 cent delta, you only needed three, uh, you only needed one share to offset three shares in the contract. But now what happens if we're at the money? Now you need one share to offset two shares. Now what happens if we get to a 60 cent delta? Well, now you need you know, 1.3 shares to offset one share or two shares in the, uh, I think I just got that off, but, um, you know, you're, you're making 60 cents for every dollar you get further in the money. And ultimately you get far enough in the money that it's going for dollar for dollar. So you have to have a full hundred shares in order to offset the loss that you're taking in those calls. Does that make sense? So where's the, del where's the gamma squeeze come in? Here's where the gamma squeeze comes in. As the stock starts to go up, the market makers have to hedge their own positions. They are a part of that stock volume that's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. So what they're doing is at first, when they're way out of the money, they might buy one stock in order to offset, you know, four or five. If they had a delta of maybe, you know, 15 or, or 20, you know, they, they would need one stock to offset four or five that's in the option contract. But as you get closer to that to money, they have to keep buying more and they have to keep buying more. Well, here's what happened and what happens with a gamma squeeze, and here's what's happened with GameStop. You had a lot of people that were buying out of the money options. Since they're buying out of the money options, what does it do? It forces the market makers to open up interest, what we call open interest in those options. And then as the stock is going higher and higher, the hedge ratio is getting further and further off. And so the market makers themselves have to go take on stock just to offset their position so that they're not losing money all the way while the trade is moving higher and higher. And that, folks, is what a gamma squeeze is. So what it does is it becomes a perpetual loop where the higher the stock goes, the more buying has to happen so that the market makers can offset their positions. And this is a, an additional part of the short squeeze. So with the short squeeze, what they're doing is they're trying to squeeze out the short sellers. In the case of short selling, they're sorting something they don't own expecting the stock to go down. If all this buying demand comes in, it raises the price and short sellers end up buying to cover and that causes the price to go even higher. Well, as the price is going even higher, guess what's happening? Market makers sitting here saying, oh shoot, stock's going up. I've got to cover more. So maybe they buy another, you know, five shares, another 10 shares at a time, just so they can keep offsetting their hedge because they know they're getting in the money. They know that they're going to be losing their shirt on this trade. So they've got to also protect themselves. And so the gamma squeeze is really not so much that you're costing, you know, the hedge fund a lot of money, which a lot of people think is what's happening. It's not really what's happening. What's happening is it's causing the market maker to get their books out of balance 
and they have to go in and uh, keep rebalancing that. And so that's what a gamma squeeze is. I hope I explained that in a way that it makes perfect sense. If not, then maybe tell me in the comments or uh, ask some additional questions in the comments, and I'll be happy to try to answer that for you. And if you like this video, if you like all my videos, then uh, go ahead and get yourself subscribed, like the page, uh, whatever it is, wherever you're watching this video. It's subscription on YouTube. It's uh, I think it's a like on Facebook. and something else on rumble so whatever it is that you like uh, or wherever whatever platform it is you're watching this on go ahead and do what it, whatever you have to do so you can be alerted to all of the videos that we send out and uh, we can keep you informed all right until next time happy trading to all of you